I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion. So I don't know that it was a conversation. As you know, Mr. Wade is a Southern gentleman. Me, not so much. <laughs> well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire. Your super duper Uber driver's here, guys. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. You part too kind. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a quick favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on. Let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. What are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? We still got more on Big Booty Fanny. Well, this time she didn't come to the stand. She was a no-show. She had enough of what she did the other day. So she out hiding. But her dear old dad came to the stand. And did you know that he knew about COVID before all of us in 2019? He knew about COVID was going to come, and this is why he moved to South Africa. Oh, I was just stuck there. I may be wrong, but I believe COVID hit in 2020, so I was asking about 2019. In 2019, did you spend any time in California? Before COVID was even here in the United States, remember I lived in South Africa and I've traveled the world. I knew COVID was coming before. I knew COVID was around before. They may have announced it in, in 20, but in fact, I knew about it and I knew what was happening uh, in 19. Okay, so, so let's let's walk through 2019 then. You said you moved here in September. So No, I didn't say that. I moved here probably prior to September. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure you did. Sure you did. Well, I'm not going to pick on... Mr. Willis, any further than that, I know he's protecting his daughter. He's trying to defend his daughter, so he'll say anything. So we're going to move on from that. But Miss Fanny Willis has tangled a big old web, and a lot of people are getting caught up in it. Right here we have Carlos Moore. Mr. Moore used to be president of the National Bar Association. And this is him tweeting and got a poster, got a picture of, him and Fanny Willis saying that he stands with Fanny Willis, yada, yada, yada. It's unfair or double standards, yada, yada, yada. Hashtag, uh, not on trial, but, uh, black women matter, whatever. So this is what the National Bar Association have said or a former president. But over here we have Terrence Bradley. Terrence Bradley used to be. Uh, uh, Nathan Wade's business partner or uh, law partner. And when Wade and Willis was dating, Wade told Mr. Bradley in confidence that they were dating in 2019. But now Wade has hired him as a lawyer. So they got a private, you know, the client privilege thing. So he can't say nothing about that. The court had him was going to have Bradley testify against Mr. Wade about the timing of the dating. The problem is somebody from the National Bar Association, Carlos Moore, has reached out and told Terrence that you got to plead the fifth. You cannot testify against Wade or Willis. Let's take a listen. You refer to what I was told by the bar. They rule 1.6, the confidentiality applies and that I would be asking for an immediate review of the Supreme Court. Sure, but applies to what? Any communications is what the person at the bar told us. Any communications? He, like he, did, he did not qualify. If you talk to Mr. Wade, that's covered. Well, Judge, I, I don't know. Um, he didn't go into those specifics, um, but this is what was told. I was sitting there um, with my attorneys. <laughs> Mr. Bradley here, former friend, looks terrified. 
He looks like he's shitting himself. Man, you see him? He just look uncomfortable. He had his lawyers there. And the National Bar Association strongly advised him not to testify against Wade. That's sort of kind of like a witness tampering. No! Fannie Willis have no proof that she paid Wade in cash, right? But somehow she paid rent through Cash App. And they're going to dig through that too. Let's listen. Would you say you paid cash versus Cash App? Oh, most of the, the vast majority was Cash App. I, cash I don't know what percentage, I'm not going to guess that. But the vast majority was Cash App. But there would be times she would say, you know, this bill came in. Did you ever pay him anything other than cash? I've only given him cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So you if we would go to dinner. Let, him, let her finish her answer. If we would go to dinner, I wouldn't give him cash because he paid for dinner or I paid for dinner. I've given him cash only a few times in life, probably four. Probably the most money I've ever handed him is $2,500. The least amount of money I've handed him, probably between $500 and $1,000. You never wrote him a check? Ma'am, I don't have checks. Okay. Now, let's take a listen to Fannie Willis, March 2020, when she was going against the sitting DA. And let's ask Fannie this question. What would you say, what would you do to a public officer if they had wads of money stashed in their house? Hey, Miss Willis, Judge Willis, what, what law did he violate? A few, but let's try this on for size. OCGA 45115, extortion. Subsection A. As used in this code section, the term extortion means an unlawful taking by a public law officer under color of his office from any person of any money or thing of value that is not due to him or more that is due to him. Any public officer shall be by himself, his deputy, or his agent or other in person employed by him be guilty of extortion in receiving other and greater fees than by law or allow him shall be guilty of a misdemeanor and repeat this part for me and shall be dismissed from office not maybe shall be dismissed from office okay all right she wants us to repeat it not maybe shall be dismissed from office now did you see when Fannie Willis burst into the courtroom all huffing and puffing and she couldn't wait to get on the stand and have a conversation. She was so eager to get on the stand that she put her dress on backwards. Let's take a listen. My whole life, when I took out a large amount of money on my first campaign, I kept some of the cash of that. Like, to tell you, I just have cash in my house. I don't have as much to debt. Now, I don't know if you caught that, but she says she took some money out of a campaign. That is campaign finance violation. What? Fanny. All right. This is her with the dress. This is the dress that's supposed to be like this, I guess. But I don't know. She's probably, you know, trying to do the crisscross thing. You know, she is from Atlanta. So I don't know. She's probably do something. I don't know. What do you think? My next question is based on her opening the door, and therefore I'll just ask it, and Your Honor can decide whether or not it's appropriate. When you went to D.C., did you go to the White House? Okay. I did not go to the White House. My goodness, she had multiple times she went to the White House, multiple times, even Wade, and she lied under oath in 4K, lied again. You want some more proof? Here we go right here. Here's the log right here. <gasps> it's so bad. Look, MSNBC, you know they love the Democrats, but look, look what look what they got to say about this one. Yeah, this this has been a bombshell and it was a slow a sort of a slow burn, but um if you if you parse the language, huge huge issues here and I want to be really clear. This is not about a relationship between two consenting adults. This has nothing to do with that. It's about lying to the court. It's about potential financial gain on the part of Fannie Willis and not not even so much. That that's a second that takes the back seat here. The issue is that her credibility is shot. Um, just as Anthony was saying, if she lied to the court, she submitted something to the court that she knew was false and inaccurate. What else was she lying about? It's a horrible, horrible look for her. I think this case is dead in the water. 
dead in the water. Now, there's a phrase that you learn in the first year of law school. Fossils in uno, fossils in omnibus. You lie about one thing, you lie about everything. Right, Fanny? You learned this in law school, right? Okay. To wrap it all up, we have Fanny Willis, former friend, who was on the stand and said that their relationship started in 2019. And we also have Terrence Bradley, Wade, former friend, who became his lawyer. He also said that the relationship started in 2019. Those two are lying, right, Fanny? Right, Fanny? All she had to do was accuse herself, and none of this would have happened. She could have said, I got a conflict of entrance, and yada, 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 get another prosecutor. She is so bullheaded. Ski wee. She wouldn't do it. So now she's going to take everybody down with her. Her daddy, Mr. Cooper, Terrence Bradley, Mr. Wade. Everybody that's near her is going to get some of the splatter. And all she had to do was recuse herself. Tisk, tisk, Fanny. Tisk, tisk. Anyway, if you guys get any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends. And tell your mama I said hi. All right, all right. Till next time, I'll see you guys again. Make sure you get your dress on correctly and get off my lawn.